This is a diagram from a guy called Michael Murphy of uh, my two bucket tripper tracker idea. And um, it's the, pretty much the same with uh, clock based trackers. Um, water um, lowers in one as it raises in another. The floats are fairly tight fitting. And um, this turns your. Um, equatorial mount at a fixed rate and um, a guy uh, Bob Wester guy um, that's his name um, he asked me uh, why not just um, instead of the small paint buckets what I used why don't I just use um, a rain barrel just one big barrel and just let the water run to waste uh, run to water the garden or something like that and I guess in my case there were two reasons and one um, I liked the having the whole thing enclosed and the second was I did try with one bucket and it had a lot more um, it had a lot more play so um, I I think um, uh, two two buckets. His idea would probably work fine if you have a plan for your water. And at that time, I didn't. We were on water restrictions. So I'm just gonna just show an image. So this is a a big rain barrel, and you would have a a larger float in it. And um, then you'd have something for letting the water out slowly, and you could have your clock based thing slowly letting the outlet down on the outside and uh, that would work fine I think but there might be too much play and you, you would have a counterweight anyway with that instead of the second um, instead of the second barrel and if you had your counterweight in a tube of water so I'm just trying to show it to you here in this. So there would be your tube and you'd have your counterweight down the tube. But this is a clear plastic pipe, it just shows it better, I think. So your counterweight would go up and down in water or in some fluid. And the going up and down, because there's fluid around it, would give a, a lot more inertia um, when you get a gust of wind and stuff like that. So I think um maybe maybe his idea of just using the one big barrel would work great on its own but if it doesn't uh consider the, um you're going to have a counterweight anyway consider a counterweight in um a tube of fluid and that will because as it moves it can move slowly up and down in the fluid but if there's a gust of wind or something like that it can um prevent a rapid movement and prevent the whole thing shaking. Now what else was going to show you? I was going to show you this I think. Oh okay. So here is um, uh, this little project was uh, just a neater looking uh, demo of the, um, the equatorial mount thing. And here in the corner we have well I won't do it in this one but th this explains you know um, different aspects of it previous where we go just going to another photo um, this is about low track tech trackers it must be this one okay here we go so uh, with the, this type of tracker it's the same uh, all over the world the only difference is the angle so in Port of Prince Haiti it's like this and in Calgary it would be way up here about 52 degrees so the angle from there to there would be 52 degrees this target is stationary this target is stationary and the drive would be here so the drive would be belt or chain or something like that and uh, wouldn't affect the movement of the two reflectors and I've explained in another video why there's two reflectors 
Okay, we're going. Oh yeah, here we go. So, a person would be standing here can reach this instead of having to um, in a traditional um, parabolic dish has to reach in a long way and um, with uh, this type of thing he doesn't have to reach in he or she doesn't have to reach in so far so that's the idea of that um, and these are just explaining the different parts of it and uh, why why the angle changes as it does so this was for um, science fair and apparently it went it did yeah I wasn't there but apparently it went fairly good um, I'm gonna just stop this now